What is up, everybody? It is Friday. I think it's Friday. Uh, bringing you another Grimsmoke Grind, wearing probably the favorite t-shirt that I have. I don't know why, I just love this t-shirt. Um, eventually, I need to do like a Norseman t-shirt, kind of like this, but I kind of suck with artwork and stuff. So, uh, I'm going to get practical with you guys today, practical machining stuff. Eric asked me a really interesting question about Fusion 360. Uh, so this will be a fusion slash machining video. So we're going to talk about fusion. We're going to go on the Mori. We're going to make a Rask blade. And I'm going to show you guys stuff. And I am going to have to edit this to make it extra awesome for you guys who want machining stuff. So today in Autodesk Fusion 360, my new favorite CAD, CAD CAM program ever. Um, this is my Rask fixture part of it. And what we're working on right now is we're working on the blades. So I've been testing this out, dialing in the code. Sometimes I'll have to draw custom uh, arcs to do the toolpath to make it do exactly what I want. And Eric asked me a question today because he's been messing with Fusion, trying to get it to do what he wants it to do. So I'm going to show you what I answered him. All right, so I hid the fixture. I'm going to hide this blade. I love all the little light bulbs in here that you can just easily close stuff or hide it super easily. Okay. Um, he said, questioned, when you are choosing a toolpath, so for this right now I want to start here and I want to go here and you just start clicking, clicking, clicking. It works but it's selecting, see all the different arrows, it's selecting many different pieces of the arc, not selecting them all kind of concurrently. And all those arrows have to be pointing in the right direction. Now they're pointing in both directions, left and right. And you can change some of them, but some of them won't change. None of these will change. That one did. Um, and that's just not good because if we do this right now and post it, it's going to uh, it's going to take you know ten different toolpaths to do this. It's going to do one little cut and then it's going to go up and then do another little cut and then go up, and it's stupid. And I actually have two sketches here see they're vertically stacked on top of each other and I accidentally clicked some of them anyway I'm gonna delete all that I'm gonna hide this top sketch because it's not the one I want done uh, top view let's see okay so what I want to do is I want to start let's start here and instead of click 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 you click on that one again make sure you're stuck on clicked on open contour and that will allow you to select the second, the third, and then keep going. And then keep going. There's a little one there I almost missed. And sometimes it will let you uh, go all the way around the part, like in just one click, but sometimes not. This is an open contour, so it's not going to let me do it. And then, uh, not that one. Yeah. And then you click the plus sign, and you now have one contour that's going to go all the way around. Let's do a quick simulate. Now when I simulate, I like to hide, scroll all the way up, all the way up. I like to hide everything so that there's nothing left. Turn on the stock, turn off the toolpath, and this is how I like to do it. And then I just click to the end. So that's what it's doing. So it's got a corner rounder coming in here. The corner rounder is actually going to buzz this a little bit on purpose. Eric requested that. And uh, we'll look at it and see how it goes. Boom. There's the smile. That's the one. So here is a blade, which has already been machined like what we just did in cam. I had Lakeshore Carbide make me up a custom double corner rounder to exactly my specifications with a little flare on the top and the bottom so that it can do this full radius in one operation without having to flip the blade over like we were doing before. Less flips the better and this is the only op that we actually have to get to both sides of the blade for. Um, and it works very well but the tolerances are crazy tight. The first time I did it went like this 
it went way too deep. It went about eight and a half thou too deep. Um, this side looks fine. Because typically I found if you, like these are eighth inch thick, if you use a 1 16th radius, um, it's best to have it up a little bit because you don't actually need to need a full, full, full radius. You can often get away with using a bigger radius tool than you want and it's a bit safer, if that makes sense, kind of rambling. Um, yeah, otherwise I'm just about very, 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 very happy with how these are turning out. Little chamfer inside there, little chamfer through the pivot. I kind of screwed up in here and the corner rounder. And I don't know if you can see, but there's still a flat, like on the vertical flat area. The corner rounder isn't getting all the way in there. So I just need to make sure it moves over more so that it's doing that. So that's what I'm working on. And like this is the very first one I did. You can see I crashed the tool here because I accidentally, when I drilled the jimping, I accidentally set the bottom plane to like negative six inches or something. So I tried to drill all the way through, through, through the part, through the table, and luckily the Mori stopped it. Uh, there was no chamfer in here, so I had to tweak that. Pivot was a little bit under. Um, lock face buzzes, so I had to change that. You know, all these little notes I write to myself. One of you guys said, show me a knife. Show them a knife, Eric. That's not a this knife. This one's actually really cool. Explain this one. Um, not so in too much detail. This one? <laughs> Yeah, the honeycomb that we did with that one. This is the first time we've ever done it just like this. Yeah, so we uh, had a plain knife before, and I anodized it blue. It's all smudged and not so blue anymore. Um, and then we just did the honeycomb pattern after the color, so it's completely silver in there, which is... Silver and shiny. So I put a brand new, fresh Lakeshore Carbide end mill in there, so it was nice and sharp. There were actually no burrs kicked up on the side, and uh, it looks just insane. Just wants to focus on your beard. <laughs> <laughs> that, that happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what she said. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? Look at that. That's pretty awesome. And then check out this one. A little knife we made for somebody. I'm sure you might be able to guess who that is. He bought this uh, a couple months ago, and we finally got it finished up for him. And, yeah, we haven't talked about DLC. Yeah. So this is a set that it wasn't really usable as is. Yeah, there were a lot of problems with DLC. A lot of spots yeah. and, like, missing. and Yeah, just... pretty much none of them were perfect at all. Yeah. This is probably the most usable set for customer use. How did you make them usable? Uh, I just had to stonewash them after DLC. So it just kind of took away all the edges and took it off the you know, the tips here, and just kind of blended all the imperfections. Mm -hmm. um, so let us know what you think, if it looks completely usable or not. Oh, of course it does, but let us know if you like it, that's the thing. And this one that I just gave him is uh, basically straight out of DLC. Did you polish that one? I buffed it a little you bit. You buffed it yeah. just a bit. Um, but this is, yeah, this is solid black yeah. DLC, no tumbling afterwards. Actually, no tumbling before. Yeah, that... That one had absolutely no finishing work before, so it wasn't necessarily supposed to be a good one in the first place. Right, and you can see the pivot. This is one of the, the things we're really pissed about with DLC. This pivot and many other parts like this just didn't get a good coating. I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this handle, this set of handles, I just, when I was getting ready to send stuff to DLC, I'm just like, well, the more parts, the better, so we can see. And this was a completely unfinished set of handles. Usually Eric puts a lot of love into the edges and it tumbles it beforehand, but I just wanted to see what it would look like. And uh, it looks amazing. But yeah, little stuff like this is completely unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And like some of the spines weren't really coated enough. They were still yeah. kind of silver. And We just need to work with them more and Yep, teach them what we need and exactly how it yeah. needs to be. It's got to be something in the cleaning process or yeah, all the steps that they take. Yeah, and then when they tried to redo the parts that they did try to redo, however they blasted it or whatever. It yeah, it got even worse actually. Here's yeah. here's one. So I don't know if they they bead blasted this blade, but the finish went really rough. 
and I missed a spot in the front, and there's no, like... I, I'd be blasted. The oh, you actually be blasted. I was wondering yeah. how that I wanted to see happened. if it would take it off and how hard it would be. Um, but spots like that, like, there's no way in the world we would ever send out a knife with that spot on it. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple more, like, look at that. I mean, yeah. It's like the DLC just didn't adhere there? Or, well, however or some, I don't know, but, yeah. Like, that section looks all right, except for the finish underneath, but yeah. Um, we're getting there, and we're going to practice, and we're going to get better. Yeah. Unacceptable. I've let it sitting. I've left it sit so long that it's actually gone to sleep. All right. Check this out. New fixture is working. Fantastic. So I'm in testing process. I'm chunking it. I'm doing the handle back sides. I got all that code dialed in. Had some problems. Had an end mill break there, had to dial in the speeds and feeds. Um, not a big deal. I didn't scrap any parts. I scrapped a few end mills, no problem, don't care. Um, they look awesome now. Handle top sides look epic. This is, this is the cross hatch pattern. I've got three patterns. Um, so basically these parts get flipped onto here, new parts go there. Blades get roughed out in this section and like we're gonna do and like I showed you already, and then after this, they go over to the side over here, which I haven't worked on yet. Um, it's already it's already three o'clock. I was hoping to get it done today. I might be able to in the next two hours, because I think the code for this is done now. So let's run that and see what it looks like. Okay, one more thing. Check this out. To post this entire code, you can see all the tool paths right there. I'm gonna click on my. I actually have this as a pattern. So if I click that to be two, you can see. It's a 360 pattern around the center point, so it will now machine both blades. Uh, that doesn't work for the engraving, because the engraving is serialized, so I have those separated. But anyway, so I'll click on, right click on that, go to post process. For my Mori, I'm using the generic Fanuc post, uh, except there's only a few tiny little things I've tweaked to optimize it. Do that. I'm a big fan of calling it anything. Oh, that's a long one. You can see I got some other ones here. Sometimes I'll go blade 04. Oftentimes I'll try to count up if uh, if I'm doing the same thing over and over again. But if it's just a quick and dirty, like, I don't care what it's called, I'll just mash the keyboard. So then this opens up. I don't need that. And I have this program called Mori Server, which sees everything in that folder. I have a, everything posts to a certain folder. Mori Connect sees that, so it's the most recent file. I just click that little button, and it transfers over. There it goes. Thinking, 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 going through the air to over there, and there it is. Um, actually, the wireless, the, the computer is wireless, so it goes into the ether, goes into the router upstairs, and then the machine is uh, hardwired with an ethernet cable to the router. So the machine's not wireless, but it's connected. And then to access it here, I simply go, I make sure that I'm in the DNC section. I go program list. I clip up because it's at the bottom of the list. And there it is, random numbers. And the randomness doesn't really matter because I'm always opening the most recent file. So I don't care what it's called. I don't need to know. I'm always just opening the most recent file which is, this is at the top of the list, I click up, so it's at the bottom of the list, and then I click input, right there. Not input, yes input. And now it's ready to go. Set up some cameras inside and we'll do it. All right, this should work for the GoPro. The base was super wiggly right here, so I shoved a plastic bag in there to uh, de-wiggle it. It should work pretty good. And I did confirm when there's a um, when I do a tool breakage detection, it'll lift up and it'll go straight to that probe right over there. And there's no breakage detection on the blade section, so this won't get like taken out. Uh, that that'd be kind of funny. All the breakage happens over here, at least for right now. So one of the reasons that I haven't been filming a lot of these more in-depth, more educational, more fun machining videos is uh, I'm just busy. 
takes a lot of time. Like I just spent the past 15 minutes looking for GoPro mounts and hooking up my phone here to be uh, synced or paired with the GoPro so I can see it and record and stuff from here. And that's just 15 minutes of barely even getting any progress setting up and all that. Um, filming takes a lot of time and I, I love to do it, but there's a lot of more very important things that we need to be doing right now. So that's, that's why I haven't been putting out a lot of videos. Um, the grind videos are super easy because I'm just like, yo, what's up, uh, blah, 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 post. Um, that's part of it. My short to midterm plans are definitely to hire a media guy, a video guy that is in charge of all this stuff and just knows all the cameras and how to set everything up and how to film it and how to edit it and uh, how to optimize all the keywords and all that jazz. Um, that's gonna happen sort of soon. Uh, and then we're gonna put out some wicked, some choice content. That's gonna be fun. But for now, I'm gonna do this video for you guys because I know it's gonna be fun to watch, I hope. And um, let's, let's get to it, I'm wasting time. All right, here we go. Uh, it's as simple as cycle start no I gotta open up that is the most recent code verify the weird name cycle start what I like to do for this machine is uh, this is the rapid feed rate so if I turn that down slower then just things happen slower so I have more time to react so like right now when I'm filming and I'm not fully paying attention um, that's a good thing to do right now cycle start getting ready for tool change So you can see it's moving slowly right now. Let's crank it up. Ah. Then I can also stop it from here too. Like if I turn this all the way off, it's, it's paused right now. See, it's not lifting up. Um, I just realized a error that I did because I showed you guys how I can set the pattern as two blades so that both will have the, um, the pattern. I accidentally posted that, so now it's machining both blades at the same time, which is fine, but it's not, that was not my intention. Um, and I don't really want it to do that right now. I just want to work on the one blade. So if I mess it up, I'm only messing up one blade. I'm not ready for production yet, so I'm gonna change that. All right, that took about four seconds. And then uh, I'm gonna stop, reset. That resets the code. Program list, up. And there it is, the new one is .hkg, blah, 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 blah. Input, done. Turn this back up. Cycle start, go. Now it's going to do the same thing over again, no big deal. Turn the coolant off so we can see what's going on here. Plowing through that with an eighth inch carbide drill bit. This one I want coolant for. This one's kind of cool. I'm doing a slot for the stop pin right now, but I'm using a ball mill to do it. And I'm plunging it below the ball. So I'm using all the side flutes of the ball mill, um, which I think is a great use of an end mill that you usually only use the tip of. this one. Oh yeah, this is my finisher for the stop-in slot and for the um, 
pivot. This one, I paused it, turned that down to zero. So this one is a double chamfer mill, a thread mill basically. in there and it chamfers the top and the bottom of the hole with the same tool so we don't need to flip it over. This one. This tool is super cool. It's called a Cogsdill Reamer. C-O-G-S Dill. Um, it's awesome and it likes to splash coolant everywhere. So we can't even see what's going on. But basically it, it, it bearingizes the hole, if that's a word. It's got little roller balls in there that will uh, just make the hole perfect. And that's it. So now the hole is, um, perfectly on size to like within a tenth or two and uh, it's awesome. Then it's just going to go in and reach out for those holes again. quite tell but this is my custom lock face end mill So this is cool. Um, I mentioned Rob Lockwood a couple videos ago. He suggested this idea to me and it's really, really good. Thank you, Rob, this really works well. So what I did is I left two tabs on the blade. This one actually gets cut off as a sacrificial tab. So the first profile pass that I did, it, does a, it leaves a tab in Fusion 360. So it goes up, over, down, lets it do a finished profile, and then it just comes in and buzzes that as the last little bit. Um, and that works really, really well. And then this clamp holds it down afterwards so that I can come in and do the finishing pass uh, without needing that tab anymore. And then this front one comes off later um, very easily. Another handy tip, if you push and hold the coolant off button, that will start flashing. Now the coolant will not turn on, which is very handy. So I actually messed up some of the code that I showed you guys how to do. Um, so I just fixed it off camera and posted it again. Uh, here's something cool. I love to start, if I need to, in the middle of the program. Um, and it's a lot different with the Fennec than it is with the, the Tormac or something like that, where it's a bit more 
obvious. <laughs> but, so say I want to start, these are all the tools I'm using. I have to go over, edit file, and then I can search throughout the file. So I know I want to start at tool 19. I just typed in tool 19 here. And then I hit search down. It finds the first version. But if you see, it's just T19. There's no M6 tool change. This is changing to tool 16, backing up tool 19, where the tool carousel will actually then bring tool 19 into the ready position. So that's not the one that I want. I'm gonna hit search again. Tool 19 M6. This is the spot where it will start machining from tool 19 and apply the H19 offset and turn the spindle on, M3. You gotta make sure all this stuff happens. And it's gonna pull the backup tool or the next tool, tool 37. So let's see if I got this right here. And then, oh, and then the last thing, it'll complain if I don't do this. If I don't go over, over, end editing the file. Now it's ready to machine. I turn the air blast on just to clear off some of the chips because we're not using coolant. This is that Lakeshore Carbide tool. I think I forgot to hit record again. Not that it really matters. fixture there a little bit since I changed it up. But let's check this out. Turn it up. Boom. Red light goes on. Door opens up. Which you know. Check it out. Sure looking good. Now some of the things with running no coolant is you usually get a worse surface finish for finishing passes. Um, you know, there's pluses and minuses. A lot of people say steel needs no coolant. This is stainless steel. Uh, I like coolant on it. But yeah, let's take it off. It looks pretty good. That corner rounder looks ex excellent. Here we go. I did undercut it a little bit there. This is actually the bottom side of it. Top side looks awesome. Yeah, bottom side does have that slight little undercut, so I have to make the toolpath deeper. Little tiny chamfer there with the corner rounder, it just goes all the way around to there. Looks pretty great, I like that. Uh, lock face was chattery before, now it looks good. Looks like there's a little chip in the end mill right here might need to put a new end mill in there this one's been in there for a long time I have to look at that closer but yeah everything else looks great this the finish tool actually I think needs to be replaced as well it's been a while I think I actually had it on my list here T39 might be chipped May 05. That's like almost two months ago. Yeah, it's time to replace that. Looks good, people. Looks super good. When you get your GoPro camera in the case all up in the coolant in there, apparently the chemicals in the coolant will deteriorate and eat the glass, the plastic, um, very very quickly like in a day or something it just turns into crystallized cracked all over so I just washed it off in hot hot soapy water and uh, it seems to do the trick for me 
I haven't done this a lot inside filming, but yeah, a lot of guys are very surprised when they wake up the next morning and their case is just shattered into a million different pieces. Real quick, uh, it is 5.05, so I really gotta go home, but I just gotta try this last tool path because I've been working towards this for a very long time. And it's Friday, I don't wanna stop right now. Um, blade, halfway machined, up one, done. Let's put it on the fixture on the side, see what it does. All right, so this side of the fixture is op two, I guess you'd call it. Really sweet tool path. You may ask why I didn't just go in with a bigger end mill, because, oh, it looks cool, and I have tiny details in the corners, and I don't want to use a roughing tool on the flat and then a finish tool in the corners, because the finish tool always cuts deeper. Um, so this just did one very slow, very light pass over the whole thing. Well, many passes. But with one tool, it looks awesome. Anyway, let's, uh, what am I doing here? That's not the one I'm looking for. That's the one I'm looking for right here. So, it goes in like so. Okay, I never actually anticipated that I would be using it with the fixture up on its side, so it's kind of odd. I, I designed it to push backwards, like towards the up direction right now, but gravity pulls it down, so it's one of those little things you learn, that's okay. Um, here's the clamp that I made. I made a bunch of these. Let's see, this will go through here. I'm holding the phone as a camera and it's awkward. I got it though. So this is one of those test blades that I screwed up, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I just gotta make sure I do push it all the way up as I do the final tighten. But what this does is it exposes the entire bevel I might end up tearing into the clamp a little bit, I'm not sure. I'll make sure my lead-in comes out, like starts out far enough so that it can do whatever it's gotta to do to that clamp. But now the back side of the bevel is fully supported. When I move over to this side, this section that I'm pointing at right here is fully 3D machined, which will support the already machined bevel. Yeah, you can see it right there. So theoretically, this should be awesome for op 2, which will not happen today, but I'm gonna buzz the toolpath here. I gotta see what it looks like. Here we have a Lakeshore Carbide six flute end mill, which I haven't used their six fluter yet. I think I would prefer a variable helix or variable flute end mill. I'm gonna see how this looks. Uh, I think variable would leave a better finish. But anyway, so I just took out, took out number tool 15, which was a 20 thou end mill for my Torxes. And I have to go, I guess I've already done it. I type in tool 25, I believe it is, yeah. Now that's tool 25, already labeled it as 375 six fluter. Um, program. Now, let me turn the rapid down just a hair here. G65P9857T25 end of block insert. I have to be in MDI mode. Uh, insert. GC5, P9857, T25. That will touch off the tool. touched. Uh, <clears throat> length is touched off, diameter is not touched off. I could do that, but I won't. Jumping into G-Wizard real quick to bust out some, uh, some geometries. Speeds and feeds. Um, I gotta admit, defeat tonight, I uh, do not have enough time to run that last toolpath. So we're just gonna shut down the Mori. 
over here, unplug the LED light inside, and then I like to come and shut off the breaker as well. I don't need that transformer sucking power all weekend. I'm going to leave the air compressor on because Eric is coming back. Falcor's still here. Anyway, that's it for Friday. Um, wish I could come in tomorrow. But I'm a good dad and I take weekends off and spend time with my kids. Um, maybe I'll come in tomorrow morning. Alright guys, uh, that's it for this shop Grimsmo grind kind of doing stuff video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, next week is going to be a very exciting week. So there you have it. Uh, I'll see you later. Bye.